Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Force, and here today we will be checking out Darkest Dungeon. This is a roguelike turn-based RPG that has a strong focus on the stresses and the difficulty of adventuring. Uh, the game is really about party and resource management over anything else. Now, here in this video, I just sort of want to take you through some of the uh, basic fundamentals of this game, give you some tips uh, from what I've learned so far in the eight hours that I've played. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff to take a look at in town, but I, I don't want to start the video off with that. I I'd like to start off with actually just getting into some, some combat and looking at the gameplay itself. So we're going to go ahead and embark on an adventure here. And I'm just going to pick uh, uh, basically a, a, a basic short one. Now this menu has a variety of different uh, missions uh, that vary from level, w which would be basically difficulty and duration. So the short duration ones um, are a little bit easier to clear and I think for the uh, sake of this video that's what we'll do. So we'll go ahead and go on one of the short level one missions. And once you select a mission that you would like to embark on, you then have to pick your roster. Now I've got a full roster of different options to choose from with a variety of different characters. There's basically uh, a few different class types in this game and each of the classes have access to a set uh, type of abilities. So what I want to start off here is I want with some sort of warrior up in the front line, someone who prefers that frontal position. So this guy, the uh, the leper, is a pretty good choice, and this guy's a, I guess like a good follow-up choice to go behind him. So I think I will probably start off with the leper, or maybe I should go. I do really like the hellion as well. So actually, why don't we start off with the hellion up front? Um, I believe she is quite strong. And then for a secondary character, we can choose. And I'm going to go over a, a lot of this stuff here uh, as we go throughout the course of this video. Uh, do I want to do the leper or do I want to do him? I think I like the leper a little bit better for a secondary follow-up. Actually, you know what? For a secondary follow-up character, why don't we just take him? Yeah, I could use him to level up as well. So we're actually going to go take, uh, take our highwayman for our second follow-up. And he's got a nice uh, multi multi-enemy ability there. Now we want a healer to go with our group, so we're gonna take uh, our vessel here, and she has got a single target heal, which is nice, as she also has a stun. And then lastly, for our final position, we wanna take some sort of a, a range character who prefers the uh, further back positions. The occultist isn't bad, the occultist, occultist also has some backup heals. Uh, this guy has a stun, which is very, very nice. He hits people in the back. Uh, this guy also has the stun, but he's got the blight and the single target. And which ones does he have? He doesn't have the single target, but he does have the shuffle target, which I don't like as much. So we're gonna take we're gonna take this plague doctor here. Okay, so this is going to be our party. We have chosen our party. Now, once you have chosen your party that you want, you go ahead and hit provisions. And then the way this works is that you have to buy provisions prior to entering a dungeon but you do not take those provisions out of the dungeon. So this is part of the resource management and, and, and your gold management is also very, very important. How much gold you use, how much gold you're bringing back and everything like that. Now we absolutely positively want food. Um, at the very least, even on the short missions, you, I like to take eight food because as you go throughout the dungeon, sometimes you can encounter the starve mechanic where if you don't have enough food for all your party members, they're gonna take massive damage. But just to be on the safe side, we're gonna go a little overboard and we're gonna take 10 food. Uh, we're also gonna take a single shovel. This is to bypass any potential obstacles you come across. I will take a band-aid to deal with any bleeding. I'll take a key in case we uh, come across any locked chest, which this will unlock them and allow us to get the bounties that are inside. And then you absolutely positively want torches. Uh, I generally take anywhere between uh, between four and eight, depending on how long I think the dungeon's gonna be. But the sweet spot I found is six. Uh, that can be pretty good. And I guess uh, we can go ahead and take uh, one of each of these as well. Cure blights, poisons, toxins, diseases, maladies, and then holy water will purge evil and restore purity. So we'll take uh, basically one of everything but numerous uh, food and torches. Now there are a lot of times where I don't take the herbs, the anti-venom, or the holy water, but again for the sake of this video showing you guys what this game is about and trying to explain some of it, we'll just go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead now and embark on our adventure. So the thing about this game is that there is a lot to explain. There's a ton to explain. I'm going to do my best to run you through all of it. 
Uh, number one is I love this dungeon layout. This dungeon layout that we happen to get for this run is a single linear path. Now, sometimes there's backtracking or multiple connecting paths, and it means you run the risk of uh, coming across additional encounters, which is dangerous because the more encounters you have, the more damage your party is going to take and the harder it is for you to survive. So we've got a couple of tabs here. This one is for the map. And then this one here is for our inventory. Now, when we're in combat, it's nice to have our inventory up because we can use things like our bandages or torches. And uh, we'll go over the torch mechanic and stuff like that as well. Um, well, I guess we can just go over right now. So the torch mechanic, as you make your way through the dungeon, light diminishes. Now, the, the lower your light value is, you see less. But what that means is that you are going to take more damage from enemies. They're more likely to surprise you, which means that they get the initiative and they get a, a, an attack before you get to attack them back. Uh, you lose scouting ability, which 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 uh, makes it so that you're less likely to see what's coming up ahead. But at the same time, the lower your light level, the higher your crit chance and the higher your potential rewards. So it's a balance. You decide, do I want to be safer and get uh, get the initiative on on my opponents that I come across, and, and then also get additional scouting, or do I just want to go dark? and get uh, that increased chance for loot, even though I'm going to be taking more damage from enemies. It's a balance you have to decide. Now, to be on the safe side, we're probably just going to keep things relatively lit, but that's how this works, and you'll see it diminish as we go throughout uh, as we go throughout the dungeon. So we're right here in an initial hub, and whenever you're in a hub that's connected to multiple sections, you have to decide where you want to go, but we just click to move to this room because this is the only one that we have a choice of going into. So right here, uh, we can check out what this is. This is a shallow grave, so we can decide to just dig into it, um, and let's go ahead and have this guy grab it. And oh no! Didn't, didn't work out so well, and he got tetanus from that, so... <laughs> so it's either, sometimes, uh, sometimes you'll, you'll, you'll get a reward from it, but sometimes it'll be, it'll be not good. We're gonna check the beast carcass here. Oh, wonderful, we had some, uh, great, we got some food from that, so that's fantastic. So now we've got a bunch of extra food at our disposal. And you notice that light is diminishing as we continue to make our way through. So now we're in the next major room here. And there could be a fight in here. It looks like there is a fight. So sometimes there are fights, sometimes there aren't. You'll know ahead of time if you manage to scout the room. And the scouting happens whenever you're in a hub. There's a random chance for you to scout the surrounding area. And, and hopefully we get some of that going here in this video. Okay, so time for the combat. How does the combat work? Well, it is turn-based. Uh, as you can see, I get to go first here with my highwayman. I don't get to pick which one I choose this guy he's the one who's going first so we've got a few different abilities now the way the ability attacks work are it's all positional based so he can use certain abilities or can't use certain abilities depending on his position for example right now i can't use point blank shot because you'll notice the 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 dot that's highlighted is the front dot so i would have to have my highwayman right in this position in order for him to use this ability. But these other abilities he can use. Now what can he use them on? Well, Pistol Shot, he can use on any of the back three. Now this guy actually counts as two positions. He takes up one position, two position. So he can technically be hit, even though it shows that first slot, slot uh, grayed out. It's the second slot that I would be hitting with this. Uh, in this position, I can hit any one of the front three. So this is one, two, three that I can hit. And actually, the Grape Shot Blast hits multiple targets, so I can hit all three of these. But for my first turn, what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to self-buff him, which is going to increase his, his accuracy as well as his crit. So we're going to go ahead and give him a self-buff here and click on himself. So now he's going to get a, a boon to accuracy and crit. So now he's pumped up. Uh, now for her... Do I want to start her off with a buff? Uh, why don't we just start her off with a nice strong attack? This is the Wicked Whack, so she can hit anyone in the front too, so that's basically just going to be him. Uh, or I could actually do a bleed, and I could hit this guy with the bleed. Uh, well, you know what, actually, why don't I hit... Why don't I hit this guy with the bleed? There we go. So there's the basic attack. The bleed was applied, so now he's going to bleed two damage per round for three rounds. Uh, this guy attacked me with a multi-shot, hit three people. This guy's going to hit two of those with a slice and dice. And then now it's my turn again. Okay, so for this guy, I have a few choices. My Noxious Blast will hit anyone in the front two, which is just this guy. Uh, it does damage. It's reduced damage. It's got a negative modifier, but it also applies a Blight damage over time to the target it hits. This Play Grenade 
We'll apply Blight damage, two points for three rounds, so it's basically like Bleed, except different characters have different resistances. So notice the resistances as I mouse over these guys, Stun, Blight, Bleed, and Debuff, it will tell you how resistant they are to those various effects. Uh, but instead of the Bleed, what I really like to do is actually, this is the reason I took the Plague Doctor, the Blinding Gas ability. Uh, if it hits, it's got a 100% chance to stun. It's, it's not doing much damage, but it, it's got a really good chance to stun, but that is offset as well by their resist, but there's a pretty good chance that if this hits, we're gonna stun them. And uh, let's see if it hits. We're gonna hit three, and then we're gonna click on these guys. It lands, now do they resist? They do not. So that, now they're both stunned, which basically means they both miss their next turns. Okay, now this is my healer. Uh, this, is pri this is why I brought her primarily. So I'm gonna be most of the time using her to heal. She's got a few other abilities. She's got a close range bash that she can do, but she would have to be in one of these two positions to use it. Uh, she also has the Dazzling Light. I will use this on occasion for two reasons. Number one, it applies a stun, which is nice, and it does some damage. But the second reason is that this ability, uh, some abilities of the Vestal as well as the Crusader that I've seen so far, will increase your light level. So if my light level is getting low and I need to bump it up in battle, but I'm low on torches or I don't want to use a torch, I can use certain abilities to get an effect plus boost my light level. But right now, uh, we are just going to use her to heal. She also has a, uh, a debuff here, which will reduce the dodge chance of someone uh, by 20. But we're going to use her to heal, and I will go ahead and heal up my frontline character there. So now she's got a little bit more health. And now that it's passing the turn on over, I'm gonna be, I'm probably gonna be out of breath <laughs> for most of this video, just because it's so, oh my gosh, we have a lot of bleed effects, that stinks. Uh, just because there's so much to explain, there's so much to talk about. Alright, so why don't we go ahead and Grape Shot Blast, this is gonna hit these three slots, so one, two, three. And wonderful. And again, we gave him some increased uh, accuracy and crit chance there, which is very nice to have. And all these guys are bleeding, which I'm not very fond of. I, I will use one of my bandages, um, I guess, on this further back guy, because I don't plan to heal him. So, and but I will do plan to heal her as well as her. So we're going to use our one bandage to remove the bleed debuff that uh, that he had on himself. And I'm going to choose to have him go for that stun again, and it does apply, so that is excellent. And now it is her turn, and I will have her heal front character as well. Yes, I know you bleed. I'm sorry. We don't have any more bandages. I would love to help you out. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead and just go with a good old thwack to the face there. 13 damage. That's going to bring him quite, quite low. He also has uh, two more damage that he'll be taking, which will bring him down to five. So he's very close to dying. Um, I could actually probably finish him off if this lands. And the stun lands, and I don't think, is the bleed gonna, no, the bleed is not gonna be enough, he still needs one more damage, let's finish him off, oh, there we go, okay, that, that, that plenty of damage there, the turning point. excellent, 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 okay, so it can hit a few of those, why don't we go with the uh, pistol shot, though, and the pistol shot is 25% uh, damage reduction, but it does have a crit, and it has a nice crit chance, oh, a lot, didn't, didn't work out for us. I think we might be able to finish him off here. Beautiful, nice, strong crit. Uh, she crits for the Hellion crits very, very strong. Like, has <laughs> has great crit, uh, great crit damage with that large two-handed weapon. And he actually can only do that multi. That stinks. That's not exactly. It's gonna be low damage even if it hits, but it doesn't unfortunately. And our Hellion. Let's try to get the final thwack here. There we go. Look at that. 28 damage crit. Raising your spirits, which is going to reduce the stress levels, and that is also something we haven't talked about l l yet. So let's discuss stress levels. Uh, various mechanics within the game, be it uh, in in combat enemy abilities or uh, certain like traps that you come across, they will increase your stress level. And if your stress level on a character hits a hundred, they are they basically freak out and they get a debuff or there's a there's a smaller chance for them to actually come like persevere and come out strong and actually get a buff a buff to damage or health or whatever um, but yeah you, you basically you want to manage stress and and try to have them low uh, also keep in mind anything we talk about here People are still really figuring out the best way to play through this game. Um, and there's all sorts of different ideas. I've seen lots of uh, people talk about going with a no light run and not even trying to complete dungeons, but basically going no light, getting increased rewards, and then just abandoning the dungeon um, 
whenever your characters get too low or just letting them die off and picking up new recruits as a way of accumulating gold because gold is actually the most important thing in this game gold management is incredibly vital uh, so you'll notice we just walked across a trap now we didn't have this area scouted and that means you, you'll walk right into a trap um, if if you don't see it coming ahead of time all right so we got a pack here and it looks like it has a map inside which gave us some scouting so we got to scout ahead a little bit so now we know uh, these two rooms are empty. There's going to be no boss encounters. This is amazing. That, I got that's a very lucky. Uh, these three rooms are empty, which means there will be no boss encounters. Okay. There are treasure chests here. There is a blockade here. There will be one battle here. Uh, so we'll just go through and and do this. But I'm going to keep my light level low for these two. Uh... Oh, I was not paying attention to that room. I should have bumped up my light level. I guess it doesn't really matter right now that the monsters, my light level isn't low enough so that the monsters are getting increased damage. But yes, these three rooms are going to be empty. I completely ignored looking at this room though. Okay, so we're going to start her off. We're just going to try to, these guys have very, very low health. So we're just going to try to one shot them. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Beautiful. And uh, I will heal with her though. Because her damage is relatively low as is. And these slimes can be annoying, the ectoplasms. I've seen them replicate before. I'm not sure what the catalyst for that was, but I have seen them replicate replicate before, which is not good. That guy should be, yeah, these guys are very low right now. Let's see if we can finish this one off. We can, excellent. I just used his uh, plague throw there. And we will, this is not the greatest shot. Does she have, I need to check her. Maybe I should put her in the second position because he, he gets a point blank shot. That's really strong, so if I can, if I can get him, if she's okay in the second position, then that's what I'll prefer to do. Alright, so here we go. There's a chest. It is unlocked, so we should be all set to open it up. The contents are mine. We got a deed and some gold. Now these things that you're seeing here, these deeds, uh, there's also portraits and a bunch of other uh, different things like that. Those are all used in town, and we'll be taking a look at the in-town stuff once we're done this dungeon. Uh, you know, like I said, I we're going to click this way. Um, there's so much to explain in this game. I might not even cover it all <laughs> in, in what we have here. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and check this body. Mummified remains. Check the treasure. Nice. And again, because we get plus loot because our light level is low right now. And no, unfortunately, that one is diseased. Uh, but luckily, he resisted the effects of that. So we'll move in here, and this room should be empty. If uh, this is... Yes, okay, so that is that does work how I believe it does. And we will continue to move now on to this room. So when I move into a room, when I was in here, I could have chosen to move back through this way. And it basically would have had me, it's still progressing. It's still side scrolls from left to right. But it would have had me moving in this direction instead of in this direction. Um, so yes, we, we some some dangers here. But again, we should be okay. Because our scouting told us there are no enemies. Now, this is a blockade. This is why we brought the shovel. Nature the shovel yourself. will let us pass through it. Without the shovel, we basically take damage and we increase our group's stress. Okay, now there is a fight coming up. So I want to increase the light level because I don't want them to get surprised. I don't want them to surprise our heroes. And I don't want that increased damage. Just for the sake of this video, you know, like I mentioned, there's all sorts of different ways you can run. Um, there's all sorts of different like theories as to what's best it, it does clear. seem and I'm gonna try we once we're once I'm done because I'm like it. I'm loving this game I'm having so much fun with this title uh, I'm gonna try some of the low light strats I just want to see how it goes okay so this is the hunger mechanic this is what I mentioned before you want to bring at least enough food to cover one or two of these happening when you're in a dungeon if you're planning to do a full clear because if you do not have enough food for each party member you're going to starve and you're going to take 20 percent uh, da damage plus stress damage which you don't want to do so it's you got to make sure you've got enough food for everyone and then beyond that you can also just eat food to increase your health at any given point but it's not a lot you know it's just one or two health it's not <laughs> it's not much okay so we're gonna have a fight right here based on what our map is telling us we're gonna there we go and uh, unfortunately we did not get the surprise on them so you guys haven't gotten to see that yet but basically if you surprise an enemy or if they surprise you you get the one up on them you get an uh, attack on them uh, so let's see this one is just a, a single target for one of the front two positions this one is a multi-target as well as this one but it's only for the back two positions so it would only hit this guy if it hits 
but I kind of like it to hit this guy because this 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 character is a pain in the ass. The cultist acolyte can really increase the stress levels of our uh, team. So good, we got a stun on her, which means we're not going to be getting stressed out by her quite yet. All right, we can do a three shot hang thing. These guys have pretty low health, although they do have high dodge, but. Uh, if we can, I'm, I'm not going to worry about buffs this round. I think we're just going to try to go and take Such them out as fast as possible. Be left uh, okay, so this one is, oh, they're both the same amount of damage. Let's see if we can get a, oh gosh, so close. So close. So close that I'd like to finish them off, to be honest with you. No, that dodge rate is so high. Yeah, that's a bummer. That's a bummer. And she's bleeding. We don't have any more bandages. Maybe I should have brought a second bandage. Let's go ahead and... No. <laughs> Triple dodge. Not good. Okay, good. We finish off one of them. High priority typically is to finish off a character Death over doing waits. something else. Like, if you think you have a decent chance to kill someone, uh, you should do it. Okay, this one has less dodge. So we're going to try to hit this character. Yes, perfect. And again, we've got the dodge speed, the character type, their different resistances. And then it shows your hero's chance to hit, your hero chance to crit, and then your hero damage would be applied. Uh, let's go ahead and just heal herself up for a little bit. And round three is going to happen. So you'll notice this character has a speed of eight. Um, so again, it, I believe it is the speed uh, plus a roll that decides who goes first. And then from there on out, I think it's just the speed that determines the attack order. Oh, I forgot to check that positioning stuff that I wanted to, by the way, which I should, should do here. Uh, so does she have any problem with being in the second position? She does not, except for the bleed out ability, but I haven't even been using it. So I'm going to put her in second position. This way, this guy will get access to point blank range, um, which I would like to have happen. Okay, so what do we have coming up? we got some treasure here. Momified remains, yes, excellent. Just a little bit though. And the next room is empty. So we are good to continue. But then we've got a bunch of fights coming up. We're gonna have, I believe, four fights remaining. Uh, one as soon as we enter, uh, exit this room. So I don't wanna eat any more. No, I think we're fine, but I will light the torch. Actually, no, we got, we're got we all set on the torch right now. It's at, we got double plus scouting, double plus monster surprise. So we're gonna, I mean, we're getting an encounter like right now. Here it is, okay. All right, so let's take a look here. 70% chance to hit these guys. Um, this chance, not great. Let's go with, uh, I'll just try to smack one of these guys, excellent. It's a one shot. These guys have very low health. See, five health for the front critters, seven health for that back one. This back spider also has a lot of dodge, as you can see. Uh, so let's try to. <laughs> there we go. This is this is great because we're not taking any damage. And then this is the reason we got him up here for point blank range. And look at that. That was amazing. That was amazing. Uh, I did not realize as well. Point blank shot. Also, yes, you'll see right here. It says range, and it also says back one. So when you use that, it's going to knock you back. Uh, so we can start a fight with him there, and then he can get a single point blank range shot off, and then he'll get knocked back one, which is fine. Uh, so we got some things here. Shallow grave. I'm not sure if. Um, okay. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that had any effect. It turns out it doesn't. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out uh, how some of these extra stuff works, like that purified water. I believe it... Oh, no. We can't get past this. We're going to take damage here. We have no choice but to take damage because we don't have another shovel. Um, so we're going to take damage and, and stress here. Without tools of iron, you must rely on Lots of stress. And Lots of stress. Purpose. Let's get our light level back up. And continue to move because I would like to complete this dungeon for you guys here. All right, so here's the fight. This is going to be a rough fight, but because of our high light level, we did get the surprise. So this is what I was talking about. Now we have the initiative on these guys. Now let's see if we can land a stun. They have a stun resist, but they do get hit with it. Yeah, they have a 25% chance to stun resist, but we do end up hitting that. Uh, and I will heal up, and I'm actually going to focus on healing up my Hellion here. Because if she gets too low, um, that'll be fine. Uh, and I want to nail one of these guys. Please hit it. Thank you. That's some nice damage there. 
Uh, he did resist the fringe uh, fringe effect from it, but and then we finish him off. So that's an excellent start for us. We got the surprise. We also have a double stun. So these two uh, acolytes, once they once it's even their turn, they won't be doing any, anything to us. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit. Uh, now this is a blight damage. This guy, his blight resist is 75%. So let's hit this one. I want it to, yes it did apply excellent plus she's got the stun on her for her turn and she might just bleed out yeah she's just gonna bleed out on her next turn so I don't need to attack her because she's got two damage per round for two more rounds and she's at two HP so her next turn she's gonna die uh, negative effects apply before they get a chance to attack so we're just gonna smack this guy <laughs> so good oh yes so so good and then um, I will use her to heal up Let's heal up our frontline warrior. And you, I will hit this character. Oh, there's a dodge. Round three. Takes the two damage and dies, as anticipated. And then it is the Acolyte's turn. And we do dodge that. So this was a very, very successful uh, battle for us. We basically... <laughs> no, no, oh, nothing bad happened to us. We just destroyed this. That is absolutely fantastic, and look at that, we got a bunch of stuff, some crests, some buffs, some deeds. Uh, again, these are all just resources for in town. We also got a single bandage, which will be nice uh, for any upcoming bleed. So we've got another battle coming up here, and we are almost through this dungeon completely. So this was a this has been a very successful run thus far. Who knows though, could go south at any point. I'm not even kidding. All right, we're going to have a battle coming up. Here's our hunger again, so good thing. This is why I mentioned, even in the short dungeons, if you're planning on 100%ing them, you might hit two hunger mechanics. So make sure you're bringing at least eight food. And the rest of the food we can just use to uh, top people off, which I will do after this battle before we enter the final room. Uh, okay, so let's take a look here. Got a really good chance to hit either one of these and just basically smack them down. And if it crits, okay, I was going to say, if it crit, it would be a one-shot, because she crits very strong. And then I'm going to, yeah, beautiful. So we used his number one uh, Noxious Blast there. Ooh, that is unfortunate. That was a very strong attack. Uh, let's use the pistol shot for five. And then we're going to see if we can finish him off on our next thing. He's going to hit everyone. Luckily, it's for low damage, though. And uh, I will heal up him. And... Let's see if we can finish him off here. Six. He should be dead in his next... Oh, no. He didn't get... The debuff didn't apply. Oh, no. He is wrecking our face. Oh, no. This guy is not our friend. This is low damage for him. That's all we can hit him with right there. I am going to actually hope for a stun because... Thank you so much. Because if he got another attack on these guys, they probably would have died. So, luckily that stun applied, and he has a fairly low stun resist. And this might finish him off. Yeah, so he is dead during his next turn, so I don't need to attack him. So let's just use this opportunity to heal up a little bit. And um, I could use this opportunity to buff her. He is just going to die here at the start of his turn. Uh, we even get another go at it, so... I'll do that, I guess. Okay, excellent, excellent. And we got a charm. This is a common charm, and it gives debuff resist, but you also lose damage. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put that on her, because I don't care about her damage so much, but now she's got less chance to be debuffed. So, yeah, there are items in this game uh, they can put in here, little trinkets and things. Uh, so, for the final room, we are going to top people off here. We shouldn't come across any more hunger mechanics because we just have one more room. Now, we could leave the dun... Oh, no, actually, this is 100% dungeon. Never mind. So here we go. Final room, final battle. Let's see, after all of our trials and tribulations, if we can come out victorious. Let's see here. Okay, so these guys in the back are a pain in the butt. Uh, I'm going to start off with heals for her. And she's still got the buff as well, which is very nice. Increased accuracy, increased damage. So that is unfortunate, because that adds a lot of stress. Um, and that is a push mechanic, oh, pull mechanic. So put her right in the front, which is unfortunate, to be honest with you. Uh, all right, so let's hope we can get a smack on one of these guys. There we go, excellent. 
I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure we'll be fine here, but you never know, so. Uh, he's got huge blight resist. This guy's blight resist is light much less. So I'm gonna hit him with the Noxious Blast. Hopefully it applies, there we go. And the Ectoplasm is gonna do some damage. We can do our Grape Shot Blast, which will hit the three, so nice. This actually works out, oh no, they all dodge. Oh no. This is a push. She's going to push her back, and she can't do anything back there. I'm pretty sure she can do jack squat back there. So we're gonna have to move her forward, I think, on her turn. Uh, and I can hit this guy, nope. I didn't, I forgot to check the chance. The Luckily his, uh, oh wow, that was a complete waste. She can do much anyways, but I, I should have moved her to be honest. All right, so we're gonna move her for her turn for him. Um, I'm actually going to move him just to get her even closer, because I don't even think she can do anything right there. And I really don't want to lose anybody. Uh, and the ectoplasms are copying themselves, which doesn't make me happy. Please do a... Oh, man. I wanted her to get pushed back. Uh, play grenade applies a blight. Dodged. Please, thank you so much. That's exactly what I needed. All right, so I don't think, uh, he's got, she's got 75% chance to hit. It'll only be three to nine damage, but if it hits on the high end, it'll kill. Uh, this is an 80% chance. That's only two to five damage. It reduces dodge, but this thing doesn't have much dodge anyways. So that, yeah, that almost killed him. So if I can finish him off with this. No, man, oh man, the high woman's sucking it up right now. And this is just part of the RNG, like this is, the ectoplasms keep freaking copying themselves. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, RNG. Stop screwing me over. Is that a pull? That's a pull. That gets that's not this this these repositioning things are very frustrating. Because they, they really, as you can see, they can really mess up what you have access to doing. They, they mess up, and the ectoplasms keep freaking copying themselves. At least we're done with that now, and we just have the damn ectoplasms left. Oh my gosh. Thank you much. One more ectoplasm. Come on, I just need one more damage now. She can't do a damn thing here. He's gonna copy himself, isn't he? You son of a <laughs> making me so angry. I wanna this, this, this so fun. How many of these have we killed now, huh? Too many. Way too many. Thank you so much. Alright, that is that victory over the enemy. That completes the dungeon as well. Let's go ahead and check this. This is an ancient coffin. We find hidden treasures inside. We will take those treasures. That is the end of the dungeon. So let us go ahead and check our report. So we completed the quest. Now, you can abandon the dungeons. You can also abandon individual fights, which uh, we didn't do, but you kn now you know you can do that. We got ourselves a leper charm, which will increase damage for uh, any leper characters. A crest and deed, which are in-game currencies. Some gold, which is probably the most important currency in this game. And then gold from any gold that we found, plus any treasures that you find are automatically tab ta tallied up and added to your total gold. And these are the heirlooms that we collected. So and then we're gonna go ahead and check out, uh, get some things here. Also leveled up some resolve uh, of our heroes. I got a level two guy now. And we're gonna check what they get. All right, she has a, uh, man. Uh, so minus 20% stress resist against unholy monsters. So she's gonna be taking more stress. Uh, my healer got Night Owl, which increases speed when the light is below 25. So that's a character that I could use for a low light level strat. And then uh, this one has uh, against unholy monsters, less stress resist, less accuracy. But in camp, we get 10% increased healing received. Uh, so the one thing you didn't get to see there in the combat display I can still is see uh, the camping mechanic, which is basically the for the longer dungeons, you can camp, and it, your, and each of your characters have uh, different camp abilities that they have access to, 
and they can do things like relieve stress or heal your characters. It's basically like a, a little bit of a rest and reprieve on the longer dungeons. Uh, you didn't get to see that there in, in this video, but it's, it's fairly self-explanatory, and there's a decent chance I'm going to do some follow-up videos, so you might get to see that more in the future. All right, so this is just a little recap. Uh, as you play the game, uh, weeks go by whenever you're going out on an adventure, and um, and then you basically just get a recap of everything that happened. So, so what, what most recently happened, which uh, we went out and fought against this and returned, we, we completed that. Um, we got level two for our Hellion. Uh, our Highwayman is now level one. We got a, uh, oh, then they, these characters uh, recovered stress and this is stuff that happened in town. So I basically had uh, this character and this character uh, recovering stress in the Abbey so we talk about the stress mechanic, right? And how it builds up, and then if it fills up, you get negative effects on your character. Well, while you're in town, you can use the Abbey as well as the Tavern to relieve stress. And what'll happen is, say, I'll go into the Abbey, and there's different things, and you can decide, okay, so I want her to relieve some stress here. So through meditation, and it's gonna cost you some gold. So her stress is giving up. I want it to reduce before I take her out to battle again. So we're gonna tell her, stay in town, reduce your stress, and then when we come back from the next battle, she'll be available for another fight with less stress. In fact, while we're here, uh, she can't actually, This the Hellion does not, the Hellion only likes to rest in town at the brothel. <laughs> That's the only place the Hellion likes to rest. Uh, so there's some sort of like uh, RP stuff that goes on with this as well. So we're gonna relieve his stress and um, and that's basically it. The only other one that I want to relieve is her stress. So we're going to put... Oh, we can't put her in the brothel because my damn caretaker is taking up a spot. Now, I could purchase another spot in the brothel. Do I, am I going to have enough? Yes, I will have enough. So we're going to purchase an additional slot. Deal, there we go. And now I can have her rest in the brothel. Below. Good for you. A hot bath and a companion to make it. <laughs> so now she is resting up in the brothel. So yeah, there, there's essentially, there's upgrades to reduce the cost, uh, to increase the number of slots, to increase uh, the amount of recovery that you get from each of the things. So the, the tavern has a bar, gambling hall, and brothel. And depending on your character's traits, uh, it just decides where you get to go. And then some of these are also cheap, cheaper than others to, to rest and recover at in terms of the amount of gold that you have to spend. Uh, same thing goes over here for the Abbey. There's just different things, and depending on your character's different traits, they may or may not be able to rest at those places. So it's really all that I found is that some characters are just inhibited from resting at certain places, and then the Caretaker is a character who will randomly take up a spot, and so you just have to deal with the fact that he's taking up a spot, and you have to try to work around that. So those are the two resting areas. Uh, there's also the Sanitarium, which you can use to cure any diseases, uh, mental and physical illnesses. So for example, let's take one of my characters here. So she has uh, off guard, which is she loses speed and dodge. So I could spend some money to remove that if I wanted to. That's an option. So each of your characters have, you know, these different negative traits and you can come here to the, uh, to the sanitarium to remove them. There is also the guild. Coming to the guild will allow you to increase combat skills. So for example, on my crusader, I happen to really like the crusaders in general. It's one of my favorite class types. I can, uh, once I've upgraded this stuff to be able to uh, upgrade various things, uh, we can, I, I don't have enough currency to actually do this right now. So again, these, the busts, portraits, deeds, and crest, you find them when adventuring, and they are simply used to upgrade your buildings, uh, various things. But once I upgrade this, I can upgrade the abilities. So I can say, get some uh, increased damage or, or, or yeah, increased da damage modifier or whatever. Maybe it adds crit. Uh, this one would probably increase more damage for it. So yeah, you can uh, just upgrade your skills here. And then you can also upgrade weapons and armor at your blacksmith. But uh, to be able to do that, I need to I need to get this stuff spent, which I haven't yet in this game save. Uh, there is the stagecoach. This is a big part of this game. Um, so depending on how you've upgraded it, like right now I've upgraded to get four heroes available each week. Uh, so when I come back, there'll be four new heroes available. There's a lot of situations where you just want to dump heroes. Maybe they're too stressed. Maybe they have too many negative traits that you don't like. Or you just don't like the class type or the... Uh, or the skill distribution that he has, so you can just ditch him. You can say, "I don't want this hero anymore. I don't like, uh, I don't like their their negative effects, or I don't like their skills." You can you can ditch a hero, dismiss them, 
and you can pick up new ones. And when you start off, especially early on, if you're losing a lot of characters, uh, the stagecoach, you can quickly and easily replace them. In fact, you can basically, if you've upgraded it to four, you can just keep replacing heroes over and over and over again. And, and that, that, there's some, I think, like, like progression strats that use that uh, to your benefit. And then you can also, if you upgrade the hero barracks, this will increase the size of your roster higher and higher. So right now my roster is full at 11, but I could increase it to 13 if I just get some more crest when I go out. Uh, a couple more things I think I need to show you. So we showed you this, this, this. The graveyard just shows you any dead characters you have. So these are characters of mine that have died uh, in my run of this save. Um, this Nomad Wagon, you can purchase rare goods. So here's a Highwayman, increased scouting chance, increased dodge, but less stress heal. That's actually very good. Scouting chance uh, is awesome to have. And then here's a uh, plus speed but minus accuracy, and this can be used for anyone. And these will change over time. Every time I come back, it's been different things. And you can upgrade the number of trinkets available. You can upgrade, uh, reduce the cost of those trinkets. Uh, and then the last thing to show you here in town is the survivalist. Uh, the survivalist, available camping skills. for. So these are for camping skills. So you can basically get some more camping skills for your characters. And again, these are just effects that are used in camp on longer missions. So missions that um, you'll notice, see here's the campfire, shows you how many times you'll campfire depending on the duration of the mission. So the longer the mission, the more campfires you get. And uh, it's just a bit, again, it's just like a rest halfway through a dungeon that will allow you to heal up your characters depending on, so like for example, his camping skills, I can heal a companion. I can um, increase, uh, reduce stress by 25 on myself, or increase, which will also increase stress on my other companions. Or I can increase stress by 15, and then one companion gets plus 20% damage. So that's what that character does. Uh, this, let's check this character. This character has Encourage, which uh, one companion will reduce the stress. I can heal uh, all companions by 10 and reduce their 10% and reduce their stress by 10. That's very nice. And each of these effects have a different uh, time cost, and you have a set allotment of time for every campfire that you sit down on. I honestly feel like I've been talking nonstop just explaining games mechanics. That's how much there is to try to like figure out about this game. Uh, but that's probably going to do it because this video is stretching it now. We're coming up at about 40 minutes. Uh, but thanks so much for watching. Uh, there is a good chance that I will be doing some additional Darkest Dungeon coverage going forward because, frankly, I just can't stop playing this game. I don't know if it's the RNG, like, slot machine uh, addictive behavior that's getting me, but uh, it's just a lot of fun. I love the art style. I like the atmosphere. It's very oppressive. It can be very stressful at times, uh, but it's it's pretty enjoyable to play and as an early access game which this is uh it seems very well polished which you don't always get that with early access games so thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed this checkout video for darkest dungeon once again stay tuned for likely more coverage going forward in the future also just check out my channel there's some good stuff there thanks for watching guys keep watching and keep owning